Hi, this is Christopher Bruzzo. Welcome back. This week, uh, we are discussing headspace and more importantly, why you need to check it in your rifle uh, before you shoot it. Um, now that applies to whether you have a rifle like this AI AX that has interchangeable barrels or something where the barrel comes pre-fit, like a Remington 700, a Ruger, um, tick us, something like that, uh, those can ex escape the factory, even if it comes from a reputable gunsmith uh, with excessive headspace. And when you have excessive headspace, this is what happens when you fire your case. Not every time and not at first, which we'll get into. Um, but this is very dangerous uh, for two reasons. A, as this breaks, gases escape out of the back. All the gases are supposed to come out the barrel. Your head is right here and putting up a picture of what your barrel, chamber, and bolt look like and you get gases escaping um, between the barrel and the bolt nose and those can burn you, they can get near your eyes, uh, it's not a good situation. Uh, and B, when you extract that round, this is what the bolt pulls out, and this is stuck in your barrel. So with this stuck in your barrel, you can't put another round in, uh, not that you'd want to, that'd be very unsafe, but uh, you could be on the clock in a competition, on the firing line, and you can't get that out. You need tools other than what's on your rifle to, to get that out. Um, I've had two rifles that had issues um, with headspace. And <laughs> uh, the first one uh, was built by a very well-known gunsmith. Uh, it was actually my backup rifle. A, it was a Remington 700, trued, everything like that, in an Accuracy International AT stock, chambered in 260 Remington. When that rifle was built, they spun up two barrels and fit two barrels, and they pinned the recoil lug. Um, so when the first barrel burnt out, I didn't have to send it back. I could put it in a, a I could use an action vise, um, and a barrel vise, change that barrel out, and uh, put the other one in. Uh, the barrel it was delivered with is this one right here. Um, very nice barrel, shot great. Um, I worked up a load for it, uh, zeroed everything, and set it aside as a, a backup rifle. At one of the Guardian competitions, a good friend of mine, his rifle was going out, and we had a competition a couple weeks later, something like that. Um, yeah, I don't remember. Uh, anyway, the... He didn't have a rifle to shoot and wasn't going to shoot this upcoming match. I said, hey, I have got, um, you know, a backup rifle. I've got a load worked up. I've got some ammo. Uh, I'll give you the reloading supplies. You load up what you're going to shoot. Uh, I'll give you the recipe and shoot it. And I gave him the brass, everything, um, which he did. Uh, you know, tested the load, so... You know, reported back, oh, these shoot great, I love this rifle. Uh, a few stages into the match, uh, he shows up at my stage. We weren't in the, the same squad, and uh, bitching at me, uh, saying I sabotaged him, somewhat jokingly. <laughs> uh, but he had some ruptured cases and then a case head separation. And 
I was flabbergasted. Um, could not believe it. Uh, blamed his reloading techniques, and we will talk about reloading techniques. Um, you, you can have case head separations, that's what this is called, um, with a rifle that has headspace, which is within specification. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But it's very prevalent when your headspace is too large. Um, after I measured it, um, and yeah, uh, it, it was out of spec, called the gunsmith. They said, absolutely no way. They looked up their inspection record and said, no, that barrel's good. Well, it closed on a no-go gauge. Um, and that, that's how we, we test these. Um, the other instance was with this rifle. I had ordered three barrels from a very well-known gunsmith, um, extremely well respected. Uh, there were Bartling barrels that he fit and advertised for Axe National AX. He didn't fit them to my action, but they came pre-fit for it. Um, and great barrels. Shot the first one. No issues. Spectacular. Uh, shot the second one, and after working up loads and stuff, this is one of the cases from it. Um, I actually had some failures. Uh, at first, uh, looking back at my cases, you can see here a line forming around the base where the other one broke. And that's where this is necking down. Uh, it's kind of like a, a looks a lot like a ductile tension fracture. Um, it is not, <laughs> uh, but that's another video. Uh, I have a, I, I've never seen actual mechanical explanation of why these fail other than you know, the failure mode. I have a hypothesis. I can't prove it. Um, I want to do an FEA to look at this, and but it's going to take quite a bit of work, and uh, a lot of it comes into reloading. I want to delve into it, but uh, we aren't going to discuss that today. So a, a warning sign is you start to see these rings around the base of your, your brass. Um, should have picked up on that. And then I had a case come out like this, where it's a partial case head separation. There's a small segment uh, which is still holding together. Did not notice it, uh, but you can clearly see where gas is escaping, and this case has fractured. And then the next one didn't come out. Uh, I'm guessing possibly the barrel was heating up my head. Your head space will increase slightly uh, as your barrel heats up. It's an issue with like um, M60 machine guns, uh, BAR machine guns. Um, it, it is an issue, but with a bolt action, it's probably negligible. Anyway, uh, saw that. Couldn't believe it again. I mean, a great gunsmith did it. I already had an exact barrel made at the same time, same reamers, presumably the same specification. Uh, again, put the gauge in, bad. Um, so I, I salvaged that barrel um, and turned uh, the, if you look on the diagram, the shoulder of the barrel, turned that down slightly. Uh, I think we took three thousandths of an inch off in the barrel shock rate. So uh, no issue, but I should have measured it when I put the barrel on. So the way this is measured is with go, no go gauges. And these are go, no go gauges for measuring headspace and headspace only. If you work in um, manufacturing, uh, like running a machine tool, a lathe, a jig bore, or something like that, uh, you're gonna be familiar with go, no go gauges. These are 
ones made for measuring headspace in rifles, and they are cartridge specific. Um, these came from Pacific Tool and Gauge. Other people make them. So I have various ones. I just grabbed two. Um, and various cartridges share the same headspace. So like this is a 6x47 Lapua chamber. And the headspace is the same for the 6.5x47 Lapua chamber. It is 37.4 millimeters from the bolt face to the neck, where the neck is a 9.58 millimeter diameter. And that's almost impossible to measure. That's why you use a gauge to do it. Um, so this one is made, uh, it works for 243, 308. 358 wind, 260 7 millimeter odd 8, 338 federal, um, and I'm sure some others. So, several, I mean, I have about 10 of these uh, for all the rifles I own, and that's a go and no go, so like five different varieties. Um, anyway, the way the go gauge works is you insert this into your chamber. Generally, you remove. Um, your ejector and your extractor so you're only getting the bolt face so you put this in your chamber and your bolt should close all the way on this gauge this gauge is the minimum headspace dimension for those cartridges um, so if it is if you're Headspace is too small, it will not close on this gauge. And this is the minimum dimension. This is what's called a go gauge. Generally, a custom gunsmith is going to fit your chamber to be very close to this, um, which we'll discuss when we talk about reloading. Um, so, go gauge. This is a no-go gauge. This is slightly bigger than the maximum headspace dimension. And for 6x47 Lapua, the difference between minimum and maximum is uh, 200 microns. Uh, roughly 8 thousandths of an inch. Um, I don't work at Imperial Measurements. Uh, luckily, most rifle uh, cartridges are metric designations, like 6.5 by 47. Uh, anyway, this is going to be slightly bigger, uh, just a hair over the maximum dimension. So, same method. You put this in your chamber, and your bolt should not close on this. Uh, it should not close all the way. Generally, you want it to just start going down. Um, the closer you get to, to full lockup, the closer you are to this. But uh, if your bolt closes on this, your headspace is too large. And that is the issue I'm talking about in this video. Um, so you can see in the image, there's interference between the bolt face and the back of the gauge. So if the bolt were to close on it, and you put in a cartridge, which is sized uh, generally, sizing dies, like if you run them down, like the instructions tell you, uh, it's going to go to the minimum headspace minus a bit. Um, that's why we generally modify that when using proper loading techniques. But in the image, you can see there's a, a space there. And it's a rather large space. In this instance, it, it would be greater than... 200 microns. So when you fire 
your cartridge. The brass expands to the chamber dimensions. The brass is very ductile. And it has a generally low yield strength. Uh, you're going to be within the ultimate strength. Definitely within the ultimate strength. <laughs> Otherwise, this happens. Um, but the brass is going to expand to the chamber. Uh, it's going to shrink back down once that pressure decreases. And I think uh, like 6.5 by 47 is maximum pressure um, is like 78,000 PSI, so something in there. And I, pr I probably exceed that not recommended, but most people who are shooting competition probably exceed that if you're trying to get maximum velocity. So you're seeing high pressures, and the brass will expand, and it's going to shrink back down once that pressure drops, but it's not going to shrink down to uh, the original dimension that it was before you fired that case. Um, and that is where we get into problems with, with headspace. So when you reload that cartridge, uh, which has now stretched out, and even with proper headspace, it, it stretches out and it's a larger dimension. But when your, your headspace is excessive, um, the case gets quite a bit longer. And the way reloading dies work is they only size the outside of the case body and they'll they'll have a mandrel that goes in the neck but i'm not talking about the neck here we're talking about the case body and there is no die that goes in inside of there um you couldn't uh, Due, due to the shape of it, it, it'd be very difficult to get something to do that. So the outside is just smushed down, and this shoulder is pushed back, meaning it's pushed closer to the bolt face, I guess, um, or the base of the cartridge. Um, and you are displacing the metal. When you run that die over it, that metal needs to go somewhere. You're making the diameter smaller, so it's got to go somewhere. And generally, most of it uh, is a very intricate topic. But the majority of it is going to go and push up and actually make the overall length of the cartridge longer. That is why you need to trim your brass. And some cartridges uh, that don't have a lot of taper on the, the body, uh, you don't need to trim that very much uh, or very often. Uh, if you have something that has a lot of taper on it, like a, a 270 Winchester, every firing, every couple of firings, you're cutting a significant amount off. Um, and that's brass that you have displaced from the case body, the shoulder, and the neck um, up into the only place it can go, eh, the majority of it into making the case longer. Uh, so when you do that, the case body, case shoulder, and case neck are getting thinner. You are removing mass, you're removing material from the cartridge case. And this is the part I said where I've never seen a, a concise explanation as to why the majority of the material is uh, taken off from down here. But what happens when you have excessive headspace is reloading one or two times uh, this, you, you get a very thin section down here near where the, the case head forms into the case body. Now this one at seven millimeters, um, the, these examples are roughly uh, seven millimeters from the bolt face uh, 
and it's the transition where the case head, this piece, is meeting the case body. Uh, that cross-sectional area there gets thin, and that's why it breaks. Uh, it can no longer withstand the forces. Now, when you reload, even if your headspace is within specification, uh, you want that cartridge to go in easily and your bolt close easily. Uh, now, neck sizing generally isn't done in, in rifle competitions because you don't want to have to really crank on that bolt and compress the body to, to get it to close. So generally, we full size. You, you still see it with neck sizing, uh, not as much. But generally, we full size. Uh, we size the entire uh, neck shoulder and body and when you do that you're bumping you're taking this shoulder and actually bumping it down closer um, so when your headspace is excessive you're moving that shoulder quite a bit um, I guess what I'm getting at is one or two reloadings with excessive headspace is probably equivalent to like 15 or 20 uh, reloadings with normal headspace. Generally, if, if you have a good headspace, you aren't going to see case head separations uh, with a p piece of brass. Your primer pockets are going to wear out and you're going to have to get new brass due to the primer pockets before you see that. I'm not, I'm sure it happens, but I'm not aware of anybody I personally know or myself uh, where you had a case head separation without excessive headspace. Um, it can happen. I've read about it, and theoretically, it's the same thing. But excessive headspace accelerates this process of decreasing the cross-sectional area of the brass where the head meets the body. Um, and that's why you generally see it with excessive head space. So it's a boring topic if you've lasted this long. Thank you. Uh, I felt it was important to discuss. Um, even if you buy a factory rifle you should check it when you get the rifle. Um, it, it can... Um, I was talking to one of the Kelbley brothers uh, at a match about that 260, and uh, it can change during the life of a rifle, but it's not going to change much. Um, and it's important, so I wanted to mention it. Um, please like share, subscribe. Um, I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.